Good morning, everybody, and welcome to today's STEM Pro Live. My name is Marlis, and I'm with the Maricopa County School Superintendent's Office and your host of STEM Pro Live. Today, I'm here with Denise from Water Connection, who's going to talk to you about how she came to own a water store called Water Connection right here in Phoenix, Arizona. So, Denise, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you very much. Good morning. Um, welcome to the Water Connection. Like she said, I'm a water store, and you may be wondering what is that about. So what we do here is I take the regular tap water that comes out of all of our faucets, and we purify it a little more than what comes out of the tap. So um, I guess to start where I came from, um, I was raised in Phoenix, Arizona, I graduated from high school from Paradise Valley, went directly into junior college, and I at the time thought I was going to become a nurse, and because I had some nurses in the family, and I thought that'd be a good job for me. Well, um, when I went to Scottsdale Community College, I started getting the prerequisites for their nursing program they had there, which you know was science, biology, and I'd never really studied that in school before. But I really liked it. I found I was kind of, you know, attracted to chemistry especially and um, enjoyed it. But again, I wanted to make money. I was a full, you know, I was going to school part time and working part time. And I had a really good job at the time. I worked for our family dentist who invited me to work. Um, for him when I was 16 years old and he trained me to be a dental assistant which was also very involved in the science um, aspect of things you know we we repaired teeth we mixed up all kinds of things you know so chemistry played a part in that and I really loved um, dental assisting after working as a dental assistant full-time I worked in the wine industry for about 12 years before starting the Water Connection. Now, winemaking is a science and an art in itself, so I learned a lot about the chemistry of winemaking. Um, so, you know, even though I wasn't like a real dedicated student, when I look back on it, science was always a part of what I was interested in. So it was just kind of, you know, a natural course for me to end up here, especially since, as a kid, I always loved water. And a couple of times, my mother had me checked by the family doctor to make sure I wasn't diabetic because I just drank so much water. Um, we had water delivered to our house, and it tasted so much better than the water out of the tap that I just drank a lot of it. And she thought there might be something wrong with me. Well, it just turns out that I like to drink a lot of water. So I ended up in the perfect place, you know, working around water every day, and I can drink as much as I want, and nobody yells at me. So um, the way we got started here at the Water Connection, my mother and I started this together. One day my mom said to me, let's open a water store. I thought, you know, I was at a point in my life where I was ready to make a change. I was kind of burned out in the wine business and sales. Um, and I thought, what the heck, let's give it a, a try. And I was thinking about this this morning. One of the... Uh, one of the things that I did shortly before my mother approached me with this idea was I had read a book that really inspired me and it was called Success Through a Positive Mental Attitude by um, Napoleon Hill. And when I read this book, I don't even know where it came from, but the idea was planted in my brain that I could do anything. You know, there even though I didn't have a college education because I never did make it back to school, um, I had all this life experience from working in all these different areas. And every everything you do, you learn from. And you're able to apply that to your, you know, whatever you're doing in life. So um, when I read that book and my mother had approached me about doing this, I really didn't see any obstacles. I thought, why not? Let's do it. So what the business is about is people bring in their empty water bottles and they just bring them in, fill them up, take them home. 
So I do what the big water companies do as far as purifying water. We just don't deliver it. So this water is much more reasonably priced and you have complete control over when you need water, how you store it, etc. Now where does the city of Phoenix get their water? It comes from a number of different sources. We get some from wells in the ground. Um, there's a number of them around the Phoenix area that they draw water from. The Salt and Verde Rivers also supply water. And then the um, Colorado River brings most of the water to the valley. And that gets to us via the Central Arizona Project, sometimes called CAP. And what that is, is an open ditch. It's a big canal system that runs a, pro a little over 300 miles across the desert. It's an aqueduct. So it, the water travels from the Colorado River across the desert to get to the Phoenix area. And along the way, you know, sometimes things get into the water and, you know, an animal, a bird might die, end up in there. So when the water gets to Phoenix and to our different water um, filtration systems around the valley, they run it through a process of filtration. They put chlorine in to kill the mic microbes that could be in the water. Um, and then it's pretty much just, you know, distributed out to our homes and businesses through the city water system. One thing I wanted to comment on, there's a, a City of Phoenix water quality report that comes out every year and you can access it, just Google um, City of Phoenix water quality report. Um, this is just something that I, I wrote down from the, the one online right now. And this kind of says it all for me. They say, it's reasonable to expect drinking water including bottled water or in-home treatment systems to contain at least some small amounts of contaminants. Okay, I understand that because like I said, they don't go to the, the degree of filtration that I am able to in here. But for the water that I want to drink and the water that I want to give my animals and my friends, I don't want those small amounts of chemicals and contaminants. Okay, now I would like to show you just a little example of the difference between the tap water and our water. So I'm gonna take some city water and put it into this little meter. This is a reverse osmosis TDS meter. And what this is doing is measuring total dissolved solids in parts per million. So I'm going to push in this little button at the bottom here and you can see that the city water is registering at almost 350 parts per million in total dissolved solids. So now what I'll do is I will rinse out that water, fill it up with some of the purified drinking water through the process of reverse osmosis. We will set this down again. Now I'm going to push the button in again. See, I am pushing the button, you guys. This is not a trick. And it's, it's not even registering. It's barely moving. So that just shows you that we take the water further along the, the purification processing to ensure that we're getting everything out of the water because even though they leave a few reasonable amounts of, of contaminants in the water, we can get those out. And that's what we do here. We want to ensure that we're getting the cleanest, safest drinking water possible because our bodies are 70% water and water is one of the most important things we put into our bodies. Without water, we don't have life. And if the water isn't as clean as it could be, your quality of life may be different. So that's my belief here. I, I work really hard to keep my system 
operating really well and changing filters and giving you the best water possible. Okay, what I'd like to do now is show you what we do here at the Water Connection. When the, when the city water comes into our store, I'm going to show you basically step by step what we do to address the different issues to, that we deal with in this water. So follow me. So now we're inside of my system room. Um, the city water comes into my store back here. Now what we begin with is twin alternating water softening. What this will do is remove the minerals from the water or the hardness in the water. Like when water splashes on a window or when you pull a glass out of the dishwater, dishwasher and there's spots on it, that's the hardness in the water. So that's what we do first is we take all of the minerals out of the water. Then the next phase is the activated carbon chlorine removal. So like I mentioned earlier, they have to put a lot of chlorine in the water to kill the microbes that could be in the water. So, and chlorine is very hard on reverse osmosis membranes. So we want to take that off right off the bat because it's, um, it's very strong and we want to get it out along with the hardness right away. This is reverse osmosis. I forgot to mention that. That's the process that we are using to purify the water. Um, distillation is another process, but it doesn't really work on a commercial basis like this. So this is reverse osmosis. So after the water softening, the activated carbon chlorine removal, then we're going to move into the reverse osmosis membranes. These are both RO membranes and the process of reverse osmosis uses water pressure to force the purest molecules of water through these semi-permeable membranes. So this allows all of the bad water or reject water to be flushed aside here at the Water Connection, we capture that wastewater and so that we're able to recycle it. So we don't have a lot of waste here in this processing, very minimal waste. Um, then after, so now all of the water has been basically purified to the extent that it's going to. Um, we take the water and go through a disinfection treatment and this is to remove microbial contamination that could have made it to this point. This is a UV light, the water passes through it, and the bacteria, if there's any in there, is killed along with injecting ozone into the water. Ozone is the best disinfectant in nature, and that's why they reference a lot when they're talking about air quality. Ozone is unstable oxygen, it's O3. So when the water is being dispensed into your bottle, ozone's being injected into the water. The half-life of ozone is approximately 15 minutes, depending upon the temperature of the water. So when you're filling your water bottle, if there happens to be any bacteria in the bottle, the ozone will disinfect it or oxidize it, and then it reverts back to oxygen. So this water has more oxygen in it as a result of ozone disinfection treatment. And then we just take it on um, through a one micron filter. And then once the water has gone through all of this process, it goes into this tank, which is a 710 gallon high density polyethylene water storage tank. So the water is held here until we're ready to dispense it in the customer's water bottles. So that's basically the process that we do here. Um, if you have any questions, I'd love to try and answer them. You guys are really smart, so I just hope I have all the answers for you. Thank you so much. All right, thank you again, everyone, for joining us this morning. Now we're ready to transition into our question and answer um, section of the program. Uh, so we've got a few questions coming in. Uh, Denise, thank you again for being here with us. And the first question, um, that process that all the students just saw, are you adding anything to the water or just taking out kind of 
Yeah, talk to us about that. Actually, since I cannot be selective in what I want to uh, filter out of the water, because this is purified drinking water, um, we have to take everything out up front. So we remove absolutely everything or strip the water. So one thing I do recommend is that people put the good trace minerals back into the water. So we do sell those in the store and they're just liquid drops of minerals that you can put back into the water. So, um, but as far as in the store, no, we don't add anything back into the water. Yeah, because like you said, yeah, if you're, you're filtering it out, you're taking mm -hmm. the good and the bad and then, yeah, able to re-add later if, if right. yeah, you so choose. Right. Awesome. And you also talked about um, uh, different traces of things being found in parts per billion. Is there any way to visualize what a part per billion looks like? Actually, yes. Um, one part per billion, which is used as a measurement when talking about contamination in water, one part per billion is one drop in an Olympic-sized swimming pool. So it's a very small amount, I mean, when you think about it. But it's very important to know how many parts per billion are in the water because sometimes it doesn't take much sure. to create a negative, you know, result. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, and what does your what does your daily schedule look like? What all does your job include when you get into the store in the morning and through the day? Okay. Well, in the morning, um, Daisy and I get down there. We turn on the lights, we, we drain all the water lines so that when our customers come in, they can get the absolute freshest water available. Um, we just check all the, the meters and gauges to make sure everything's functioning properly. And, you know, that's really about it. Fill up our, our ice machines so that people can come in and get a nice glass of ice water. And, and we're ready to go. A lot of times I have people lined up at the door when I get in there and they're, they're thirsty. Perfect. Mm -hmm. um, and along with the systems, is there any, what kind of upkeep is involved in those? In the? Uh, in the, in the um, reverse osmosis right. system, like is there gotcha. cleaning or? Parts of the system are automated and so they will back flush, you know, on a time schedule. Some of them regenerate on demand. So like the first part of the system where you had the, the three tanks, they will regenerate upon demand. So depending on how much water I'm processing, the system knows when to regenerate or to clean the resin tank out. So, and part of it, I have a technician that comes in and changes the actual um, cartridge filters. We do some of it ourselves. So it's in different phases, but the good thing is everything is always being constantly monitored. So I always know the status of the water. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Um, and a question from Linda Sanchez's class. Uh, since you put the water through a salt machine, does it taste like salt at all? No, it that? doesn't actually. The salt is used to, when I just referred to a resin tank, the salt is used, um, it's a brine tank, to clean the resin in those three first tanks so that the salt doesn't actually stay in the water. It's only used to like flush out the resin. Um, and if any salt were to carry on in the system, the reverse osmosis membrane will filter it out. So there is no salt or salt left in the water. Mm -hmm. Right. Very good. Um, and um, another question: um, Are there a lot of stores like yours in Phoenix? And I know there's a lot of water stores where we talk about. Yeah. Some there's the not. Um, I don't know the exact number. Um, I really don't know. I haven't checked on that lately. Yes, there are a few around, but I just don't know how many. Um, sure. And yours is yours is um, entirely independent. You are. Yes, yeah, I'm not affiliated with anyone. Um, I've been there for over 25 years now, so I'm kind of like the, you know, the the guru of the water purification. Uh, store awesome. yeah. category, yeah. For quite a while. <laughs> um, and then you said that you constantly monitor uh, your water um, mm -hmm. in the store. Are there other people or organizations that monitor that water as well? Yes, well, the health department comes in on a regular basis and they um, go through the store, make sure everything's functioning properly, clean. Um, yeah, we always fly with, you know, 
pass with flying colors is what I wanted to say. So, Perfect. yeah, we do a really good job. Awesome, mm -hmm. awesome. Um, and wanted to ask you too. All of the bottles we saw in your store, you've got you've got big ones, you've got plastic ones, glass ones, ceramic ones. Um, those are all reusable, so people bring those back Absolutely. and yep, refill. And that's another nice aspect of going this route. Instead of buying like a case of the you know one liter bottles at Costco and you drink them and throw them away, here. You're bringing your bottles back in and you're refilling them so you're not creating waste, which ends up in the landfill. Even if it is recyclable, not everyone is conscientious about that. So this is a way of reusing bottles and not creating waste. And we have different sizes because maybe you're a really little old lady and you can't lift a big five gallon bottle. Or you know maybe you've got five kids in your family and you need four or five gallon bottles. Whatever you want to do, you know, you're in charge when you get water on this way. Mm -hmm. So you can call the shots. Sure. Mm -hmm. And I know, yeah, you had the plastic bottles, glass, uh, some of those nice ceramic ones that can sit on top of a stand in a, right. in a kitchen or dining room. Is that just personal preference? Are there yes. differences? Yep. Whatever works for you. Awesome. You, you're the, the boss in that department. Awesome. So, mm -hmm. And then we had a question you mentioned a little bit ago, and we saw some footage um, during our first portion about um, the ice you sell. How do you, how do you make ice? And okay. Yeah. What well, like? back behind that tank, that you, we didn't take a picture of it in the video, but um, I have a commercial ice maker in the back room. So we have another pipe that runs the good clean water back to the ice maker. And it makes ice all day long because we sell it in bags. We have big 20 pound bags, we have eight pound bags, and then we also make um, Hawaiian shave ice. Mm -hmm. So that makes our Hawaiian shave ice really good because it's the purest ice you can get too since it's made out of our water. Nice. So yeah, come in and try it you guys. Nice. I was going to say, I don't think, yeah, we talked about that at all during yeah, the first portion, did. but you might have seen some footage with some colorful bottles of different syrups mm -hmm. to yeah, mm -hmm. add on top, add some tasty flavors. Um, another question from a classroom, what is the last step of the purifying process? Okay, remember when I showed how once the water's gone through the system up to this point, it goes into that big tank? Well, when the water is being dispensed into your bottle, when you're squeezing the handle and filling up your bottle, the water comes out of that big tank and goes through the second part of the system again. So it's being passed through the UV light again. The ozone is being injected again. So it just kind of like, you know, fluffs it up, if you will, or just re-disinfects the water. So you're getting more oxygen in it to disinfect your bottle in case there's any bacteria in it. So that's what we do. And then it just goes in your bottle. You put the lid on and you carry it home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very good. Um, a question, what what would you do if your system broke down or has it ever broken down and then are you able to repair yeah, it? Yeah, it has broken down and I had to close the store, you know, and my, my poor customers are so disappointed, but, um, you know, things happen and what did it? One of my tanks collapsed one time for some reason. This was back when I first opened. But, um, and then one time I ran out of water. Back in 1999, right before Y2K, there was a lot of hubbub and people were, you know, stocking up on water. And so many people were lined up to get into my water store to fill their bottles and to buy new bottles um, that we ran out of water. Well, I can only produce water so fast. Yeah. That big tank was empty. And so people were standing in line waiting until I could produce enough water to fill their water bottle. So, you know, it's life. You just never know what's going to happen. Yeah. But, you know, wow. we get up and running again. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah. yeah, I was just thinking, too, that some of our students would have been born right around that time, too, okay. to think about. So you may have to ask your teachers about Y2K and yeah. the excitement right around that time. Um, let's see. Uh, what is the largest container of water someone can fill at your store? Well, as long as you can carry it out, you can fill it. Now, sometimes people ask, you know, can I fill a 55-gallon drum? Well, you might want to make trips back and forth if you're going to go that route. But typically, the biggest bottle that comes into my store is a 5-gallon. Mm -hmm. And those are the, you know, the typical blue, you know, round bottles that we all see. Um, but yeah, you can bring any size in you'd like. Perfect. Do you ever have people bring carts in? 
Yes. So, okay, I would say that would yeah. be easier, almost like yeah. A, yeah, shopping cart. Place. You can do whatever you want. You're the boss. That's what's <laughs> fun about this. I love it. Mm -hmm. um, another great question. Do you think that uh, the process you use at Water Connection will ever be available in homes sometime in the future? Well, no. Not to the extent that we do because the, part of the processing for disinfection, the ozone, mm -hmm. that is a gas. And in, in order to put that into your home, would be really complicated unless you built a separate building to contain it because this is this is really serious stuff we do here. Ozone can be very strong in, you know, if it's not vented properly, etc. When it's concentrated like yeah. Yes, yes. So um, that part of it will not be in a home. Mm -hmm. It's just not happening. Uh, it's not coded for that. Sure, so. sure. So other steps of the process. But you can put happen. a reverse osmosis system in. You can get the process, but it won't be exactly like my water. Sure, so. sure. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, and then last question, because we need to uh, wrap things up and let you all get back to um, your class time. Um, is for students watching who are, you know, maybe more interested in this process and think, oh, you know, water, water is an essential part of our daily lives and for us to live healthy um, lives here in Phoenix. Um, what, what advice do you have for people who maybe want to follow um, in a similar career or, um, yeah, related to what, what you're doing today? Well, gosh, you know, water is, water is the one thing that every single person on the planet needs. I mean, isn't that interesting? Water is vital for life. Plants need it, animals need it. You know, science. I mean, like I talked in the beginning, I really like science. You could go so far with this because I hate to say it, but I don't think the water quality in the world is going to be improving. I think there's a big, as a matter of fact, right now people tell me, open one in my store or my town, you know, where people are in different parts of the country. You should open these here. I think, you know, you kids could do this. I did it. And, you know, I don't have a college education. I wish I did, but, you know, keep going. I'm not saying that. Um, but you can do this, and there's a, a need for it. Um, so come and talk to me. I'll help you, you know, point in the right direction. Sure. Yeah, and um, we will be, of course, as usual, we'll be posting today's uh, entire broadcast up on YouTube and on our website. And then on our website, um, we will have a direct link to uh, Denise's Water Connection website um, and also some information um, about, yeah, related studies she mentioned and some other resources. And you're welcome to drop by her store, have some shaved ice, uh, pick up some water, um, and she can talk to you more in depth about that. And like Absolutely. she said, yeah, this is likely just a growing need. We all need clean water. And um, yeah, Denise is here to talk with you. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, everybody out there, thank you, Denise, for being oh, with us. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank, this has been a lot of fun. And I hope you enjoyed it, you guys. Um, carry on and study well. Perfect. Thank you all. <laughs>